Time travel is often seen as one of the greatest scientific topics of the modern era, with hypothetical arguments and futuristic theories connecting some of the most fundamental questions of the universe with some of the most profound discoveries in the quantum world. Although physicists and academia regard the concept as being completely impossible in the real world, and a violation of entropic theory, there still exists a small handful of people dedicated to the topic in such a tremendous way, that they end up putting their lives on the line for what they believe in. With one such man known as the madman Mike Markham, he'd very much put his life on the line for everything that he believed in, and would become the centre of one of the strangest time travel mysteries on the internet. Back in 1995, Michael Markham had been working out of his home and seemed to suffer from a long bout of unemployment. Having spent a few years studying for an electrical engineering major, Markham believed that as long as he could find a way to fund his private work, he would be able to stumble across a great invention that would allow him to get out of his financial situation. At the age of 21, however, Markham began to grow increasingly desperate, with many acquaintances remarking that Markham's health started to deteriorate. It was around this time that Markham was messing around with a simple electrical design known as a Jacob's Ladder. A Jacob's Ladder is a simple electrical device with the focus of demonstrating the movement of electricity when paired with rising hot air. According to the physics description, the transformer located at the bottom of a Jacob's Ladder creates the potential difference between two wires that are positioned vertically and parallel to each other. Due to this potential difference, the electrons repel each other, causing them to jump from one wire to the other parallel wire to try and get as far apart as possible. This separation of electron creates an arcing visible spark that connects the two wires horizontally. The spark then heats up the surrounding air, which acts as an imaginary third wire since the air acts as a conductor once heated sufficiently. Because hot air rises, the spark begins to rise with the air causing it to ascend vertically up the middle point between the two wires. When the spark gets to the top of the wires, the spark dies, cutting off the connection between the two wires and starting the cycle over again at the bottom. According to Markham, once he got his Jacob's Ladder working, with the use of his CD laser to help reduce the air resistance between the two wires, and create a continuous arc of electricity without the connection being severed, he claimed to have witnessed something remarkable. Markham claimed that the electrical arc began to form a vortex that distorted light, and appeared to have been almost three-dimensional in his appearance. Curious as to what effect this vortex would have had, he tossed in a sheet metal screw, and watched the electricity strike the screw, before causing the screw to suddenly disappear and vanish into thin air. Originally Markham believed that he discovered a small primitive form of an electrical death ray, but then after a few seconds had elapsed, he watched the screw suddenly reappear and drop down from the wires, as if it had suddenly been transported back in front of him. Instantly, Markham theorised that what he'd actually witnessed was the properties of a time machine. He believed that the sheet metal screw had been transported through time, and suddenly reappeared once time caught up when the screw had been transported. Unfortunately, before he could make another attempt to test out this new theory, the compact disc laser he was using for his experiments suddenly caught fire and burned up. Given Markham's desperation and increasingly worsening financial situation, he quickly wished to reattempt the experiment, but instead to scale up the experiment in the hopes that he could send himself into the future to retrieve the winning lottery numbers, before finding a way to jump back in time and win the lottery. Without wasting a second's time, Marcus then went to several electrical engineering stores to purchase much stronger transformers, but he found that to scale up his experiment, he would require a transformer that would have cost him over 20,000 US dollars. Due to his financial problems, he soon left the stores feeling deflated. Several days would pass before Markham would come up with another plan. 
After remembering that there was a local power station nearby, he secretly travelled to the place at night and discovered an unprotected St. Joseph line and a powering station within King City, Missouri. After spending several hours looking the place over and scouting the area, he found six inactive transformers, each weighing over 300 pounds, and capable of generating several times the energy he required for his experiment to succeed. Once home, Mike Markham connected the transformers to the house's power outlets and constructed his new and improved Jacob's Ladder, several times larger than the previous, and got ready to jump into the stream of arcing electricity. Once the power turned on, however, the overloading of the electrical grid caused by the transformers led to a massive brownout in the area, causing half of the city to suddenly suffer from electrical damage ruining several hundred home appliances and shutting down the electrical grid for several hours. Even worse for Markham, his six transformers each overloaded, and were no longer functioning for him to conduct his experiment. Through a strange coincidence, Mike's roommate would attract a visit from the police after getting into a dispute with the next door neighbour. According to the police, Markham was being blamed for supposedly shooting out the glass screen door of the next door neighbours, despite not having been anywhere near the area at the time of the dispute. Frustrated by the accusation, Markham told the police that he had nothing to do with the event, and that the only person who owns a BB gun in the home was his roommate, who most likely shot out the glass door. In retaliation against Markham, the roommates then told the police about the Transformers experiment and explained where they could find evidence of the experiment that caused the townwide damage. After law enforcement officers looked into an outside shed where several of the stolen Transformers were being kept, Mike Markham was arrested and taken to jail. After trial, Markham received a total of 60 days in jail. Although Markham was found with over $13,000 of stolen materials, and having caused damage to nearly several hundred thousand dollars worth of electrical equipment and home appliances, Markham would only receive two months due to the rather strange comments he made during his trial. According to the arresting officer and the judge, Mike Markham had confessed to the crime, and said that he had successfully discovered how to construct a time machine and was only trying to send himself into the future to retrieve winning lottery numbers, to help fund and build his own private research lab. Once the judge heard Mike Markham's case, the judge realised that Markham was severely mentally impaired, and appeared to have been suffering from some form of delusion or illness, thus resulting in him receiving the minimum required time for his sentence. Shortly after the trial, the local newspaper, the Kansas City Star, would run a story on the Mike Markham case, with a tongue-in-cheek tone in regards to the story, that would result in the local popularity of the entire experience. The story would receive enough popularity while Mike Markham was in jail, that Art Bell, the host of the paranormal and supernatural radio show known as Coast to Coast AM, would reach out to Mike Markham to hear his side of the story, Hoping to receive additional funding for his research into time travel, Mike Markham agreed to go on the show to help build up a following. While on the show, Mike began telling his entire story, and his thought process behind the time machine he was building, mentioning many well-known theories surrounding time travel, such as the strange electromagnetic field vortex generated by the Philadelphia experiment. As he told his story, however, Many of the callers did not believe that Mike Markham actually caused a blackout across his small Kentucky town, and claimed that the arrest was a hoax to sell his story as being actively covered up by the United States government. Despite arguing with many of the callers, it was not until an unnamed caller joined the air and began supporting many of Mike's claims that listeners began to believe what Mike was saying. As it turned out, the caller on the radio show was Mike's arresting officer, who helped to provide additional details around their case, as well as what it was like seeing Mike's personal lamp, mentioning that Markham was found with an electronic cigarette light made from the broken parts of an old microwave oven, 
an electronic piggy bank Mike had designed and programmed himself. They kept track of the money he placed into this small container, alongside many other strange homemade inventions and contraptions that Mike was hoping to patent and sell prior to his time machine invention. By the end of the show, Mike received several calls from fellow time travel enthusiasts, wishing to give him ideas on how to design and engineer the technology, as well as several thousand dollars worth of funding for his private time travel laboratory. Now having more than enough money to retry his experiment, Art Bell asked Markham if he could instead try to work on other inventions, or work to rebuild the time machine. Markham admitted he would use all of the money on the time machine, and that he'd be sure to bring his cell phone with him on his journey to document the entire event. Several months later, Mike would contact Art Bell to tell him about his new and improved time machine. Created with the help of others who believe that a transformer made from copper lining and quartz crystals would help to create free energy once he figured out a way to tap into the unlimited infinite zero point vacuum energy. Mike then said that his design would be able to use over 3 gigawatts of power, an amount of energy equivalent to powering almost a million homes within the United States. Believing that Mike Markham was entering a stage of delusion, Art Bell attempted to convince Markham that if he jumped into the electric charge of the Jacob's Ladder, he could end up seriously hurting himself. Of course, Mike countered Art Bell by saying that the Jacob's Ladder was nothing more than the beanstalk from the Jack and the Beanstalk legend, and that he should be perfectly safe. Unsure of what else to say to Mike Markham, Art Bell then asks Mike that before he conducts the experiment, he lets him know so he can go over to his laboratory to either witness the first conclusive evidence of time travel, or talk him down from the daring end calling Mike a madman for even attempting something so dangerous. Loving the name, Mike decided to go by the name of Madman Mike Markham and continue with his experiment anyway. Before the show ended, however, Mike then gave all of the listeners his personal home address so that they could witness the result of the experiment as well. It was around this time that several groups of people began showing up at Mike's house to seemingly troll the guy over his strange time travel obsession. In one event, Mike remembered that during a party with all of his new time travel friends, he'd stepped away from the main room to talk with some people, and when he returned the couch had suddenly vanished. Mike began accusing and questioning people, believing that someone had moved or stolen their couch. Several people then started to tell Mike that the couch must have teleported, and disappear through time from a suddenly opened time vortex. Mike then looked throughout the entire house, but was unable to find his couch. Several years later, a listener of Coast to Coast AM called into the show and asked Art Bell about the story of Mike Markham, and whatever seemed to have happened with his time travel experiments. Art then remembering this strange story, told the viewers he'd look into the story and figure out whatever happened to Mike Markham. Later, Bell remarked that the phone number that used to belong to Mike Markham appeared to no longer work, and that close friends of Mike had no idea where he went, suddenly disappearing one day after he mentioned that he was going to work on one last experiment. Intrigued by the sudden turn of events, listeners into the Coast to Coast AM began calling into the art show, and telling him about their encounters with Mike, and where they believed he could have ended up. Before the show ended, one caller seemed to have had an even weirder theory surrounding Mike's sudden disappearance. According to the caller, there was a body that police had discovered back in the 1930s on a California beach. After an autopsy report, it appeared that the man who fit the description of Mike Markham had been crushed to death from all angles, as if he'd been placed inside a tightening metal tube. Even more strange, the man's body was found with strange plastic and metallic devices that looked eerily similar to a modern-day cell phone. Given the impossible to explain similarities between the body's description and Mike Markham, along with the fact that Markham claimed that if he conducted his experiment, 
he'd bring nothing but his cell phone to document everything. Bell and his listeners began to wonder if the body recovered back in the 1930s was actually Markham's body from the distant future. The sudden twist in the story led to the fascination with Mike Markham hitting the internet in total popularity, with many different places, websites, articles and YouTube channels talking about the event. Although it's nowhere near as exciting as the time travel theory, the truth behind Mike Markham's disappearance is far less fantastic than people realise. Interestingly enough, Mike Markham had been a frequent member and user of a website known as Paranormal Forum, and would post there quite frequently, updating his followers about his time travel theories and new time machine designs. After some financial problems, however, Markham decided that he would move away and live in Hawaii to provide himself a much needed break and to find a new home to live. Once he moved to Hawaii, however, everything that's happened over the past few years hit, which caused him to lose all of his money and face an even worse financial situation. To this day, Markham is homeless, living on the beaches of Hawaii, working to save up enough money to one day return to the mainland of the United States and begin his time travel experiments once more. So what do you make of this interesting story? And do you believe in time travel? Be sure to leave your questions and answers in the comments section below and help us to grow this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos. Thank you.